Hi everyone, welcome to Art and Talk. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. If you're new to Art and Talk, Art and Talk is all about meeting artists and being inspired. If you've been watching us for a while, thank you so much for your continued support. On Art and Talk, we step into the mind and heart of each artist's guest to gain deeper insight into their art, their message, and their process. Today, we're going to continue to bring you another artist from the Being Heard, Being Seen exhibit, which is currently on view at the Cultural Council from Palm Beach County in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. Being Heard, Being Seen honors the LGBTQ plus community with thought-provoking artwork created by Palm Beach County artists. So today our guest is a multidisciplinary artist. Some of his art centers around health issues and social commentary. He's also been very innovative in creating an original technique with fine art paper manipulation. And we'll be looking at some of his artwork and we'll also be watching some videos as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome our guest, for today, Emilio Aponte Sierra Prorete. Oh, thank you, Leslie. I am so excited and so happy to be here. As you say, that is my name, Emilio Aponte Sierra Prorete. I originally from Colombia, South America, and right now I live in Palm Beach County, in Palm Beach Garden, more exactly. And I moved from Colombia in 2002, actually, oh my God, 20 years already in this beautiful country where I, I moved from Colombia seeking political asylum. And now I am an American citizen and very proud uh, uh, to be part of this country because this is the country of the opportunity. And I am here and I am trying to give everyone my beautiful art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and your art is so creative and so innovative, and I love how you love to build, you love color. There's so many aspects of your art that um, I'd like for us to dive into, but before we do that, um, we have a video, a beautiful video, I might add, from the uh, favorite um, poem project, Florida, where you're reading a poem that has deeply, deeply inspired you and um, helped you to really um, create your own road, create your own life, build your own life and create your own destiny. Um, so I'd like for us to go ahead and show that as we're opening up the show. Is there anything that you'd like to share with us about um, the video before we show it? Sure, this video is so important for me actually because it's a video that the favorite poem project with the University of Boston and the Library of Congress. What they did is they sent an open call to the entire country for people who love poetry and how poetry changed their life. And I said, my, I said, okay, let's, let's apply. And there were more of a thousand people from Florida and they, I was one of the chosen one. So I said, oh, if they choose me it's because maybe my history the way my path has been uh, uh, evolved in this country, maybe can uh, serve as a model or, or as a window for others to see and be, you know, reflected and do not the same what I did, but at least an inspiration. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and show that. Give me just a moment. And we're gonna pull that up. I am a refugee from Colombia. I left my country because the illegal group in Colombia, they kidnapped me, trying to kill me. I have to leave. So I come here and I am a refugee. My name is Emilio Aponte and I work in public health, specifically in HIV prevention. What I do in the community is um, HIV awareness. There is no road by Antonio Machado. Traveler, your footprints are the only road 
nothing else. Traveler, there is no road. You make your own path as you walk. As you walk, make your own road. And when you look back, you see the path you will never travel again. Traveler, there is no road, only a shift wake on the sea. Before I came to uh, this country, uh, I was living in Colombia. So I was working over there in high level job, professional job. I was helping the poor people, a small town, and Colombia had political problems, different illegal group. They was not happy with the job that we were doing there. And at some point, they pushed me away and they threatened me. They, they say they want to kill me if I continue doing that. Because my life was in danger. I left my country and came to the United States working in whatever work I can do. The reason I am here is not because I was dreaming to come to this country, but because the political situation over there pushed me out. My art reflects what I am. I like to create things. I like to build things. But it's easy to build things with beautiful things already made it. But I say, you know what? But in Colombia also, I was environmental activist. And always I say, from that ugly thing, I can make something beautiful. So I start working with all recycled material, plastic, whatever I have, because actually it was free. I don't have to spend money. So I pick up garbage and clean it up and transform. Now what I'm doing is pick up any paper from newspapers, magazine, I fold it, I glue it, I cut, I tweet, I weave, and I turn for that recycled material in something new. Caminante no hay camino de Antonio Machado. Caminante. Son tus huellas el camino y nada más. Caminante. No hay camino. Se hace camino al andar. Al andar se hace el camino y al volver la vista atrás se ve la senda que nunca se ha de volver a pisar. Caminante no hay camino, sino estelas en la mar. That's why I live my life. For me, the American name is not just add money, be rich, to start from zero and make my own path and build my own destiny. This is the real American dream. Every time when I read my child's poem, I find something new. I find a new path, a new road, a new way to express myself. Oh. That brought me so memories in my country. Wow. Yep. Wow. It's such a beautiful video. It really sets a good foundation for us to really step into your shoe to, you know, get some insight into your journey thus far. And um, also to, you know, see some of your art and get in, into the interesting um, view you have that we need to use existing materials to transform them into something beautiful. So we already see how, you know, how your, your eye and, and your mind and, and your heart, you know, look at the world and um, use these materials to create and to create something beautiful, as, as you said. Yeah. 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 It's, it's that, that, that video actually, when they, they explained to me, okay, we decided to, to record this video because we want to show the different path of you has been uh, taken in this country. So they highlight there my work uh, as a, a community leader in the HIV field, and also my path as an artist, and my path as a, a Latino uh, immigrant gay living in this country. So those three paths they were what they focus on and. That, that is my life, that, that is who I am. I am a Latino gay who is struggling with the language. I just tell my uh, 20 years living here and it has been no easy, but art has been the, the key for me 
moving forward. Mm -hmm. And can you share with us, Emilio, what are some of the mediums that you work in? Yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, here in the background, you can see mostly the uh, mixed media and it's mostly paper. So that is one of the media is uh, paper manipulation. And that media, I am um, mixing different paper manipulation techniques, you know, the, the, the traditional origami, the paper mache, paper sculpture. And I add other techniques that I learned in Colombia uh, from my high school, elementary, middle school, and high school in art. That was my, my art uh, education. And basically, I always was, were working with paper. So that is the main media I work on. However, also I work in ink on canvas. I use the watercolor technique, but I don't use watercolor paints. I use ink. That is why the color is always is strong and bold because that reflects the color I, I grew up in Colombia, all the, the environmental, the flowers, the beards, all those kinds of things, that color is always has been in my mind and I try to put in my art. And the third media that I work also is a photography, but not just photography, I change the photography, I manipulate the photography. And I, am, I had a master's degree in education and guidance counseling, and I use that particular medium to uh, develop different tools that will help me to educate people in the different issues and health issues, HIV uh, and, and others. So those three, photography, paper manipulation, and ink on canvas. And the paper manipulation now uh, from 2020, I am moving forward. So I call more mixed media because I am still using the technique that I developed, but now what I do is I change the paper. Now I use any kind of material that can be manipulated as a paper. So I, you know, I can put fabric, plastic, pipe, metal, all those different kinds of things. And one thing also uh, uh, I always, you wanna find in my art is aluminum foil. Always that is like a part of my signature and the woman in my art, they have hair and the hair is made by aluminum foil. You're so creative and innovative with this whole paper manipulation. So you love paper, you love texture. And as you're saying, Amelia, it's really evolved now to really combining all sorts of different paper, all sorts of different um, materials that you work with. And then it sounds like the um, photographic manipulation is one of the ways that you also combine health issues with your art to bring awareness. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I use that and I do art workshops and, uh, and lecture. And when I try to explain something, I am very visual. That is what I, you know, I am an artist. So I like to use pictures and photos and change it to educate people and the different issues or the different uh, uh, aspects that I am lecturing or I am talking. Mm -hmm. And now we have this amazing uh, Covida sculptural oh, yes. piece to look at that's at the Cultural Council. Um, but before we look at that, when you are have all these materials around you, the mixed media and, and, and all these um, materials that you love to work with, do you have a mindset already of what you're going to create? Um, we, we know you love the form, the human form, um, or does it just kind of happen as the, the pieces are there? Do you look for certain pieces? How does all this play out for you? It's a great question, Leslie. Thank you so much for asking because it is, I go with the flow mostly of the time, but because I do um, art, by commission. So sometimes I know what I have to create because the, the person who requests me to do the art piece, they know what they want, right? And they say, I want this. So that part I have to follow uh, whatever they asking me to do. And I start doing some sketches. So I guess I make the sketches. I do the, the final thing and, and, and usually a pencil. And once I do that, 
I have to look at where the art piece will be exhibited, right? So it's, it's a, a public art, meaning it's an outdoor uh, art piece. So I cannot use paper, obviously, <laughs> right? So I have to change the material. So in another, another case, when I, I know it's an art piece gonna be inside, so I use paper because I love the texture and how I can work with paper. Once I have the sketch and I have the, the visual um, final product, I start collecting the material. When it's an outdoor art piece, a public art, I have to choose weather resistant material. And also not just weather resistant material, men, human resistant material, because our public art is up there and people want to touch and want to, you know, take the pictures and want to, you know, to touch and COVID, as you mentioned, that art piece is a public art commissioned by the city of West Palm Beach. And that is why she is made using my paper manipulation technique, but I replace all the paper for different material. So to make a, a summary of my answer about my process is definitely I follow my inspiration. I sketch the art piece, I select material, and I, the selection of material depending on where they're gonna be, outdoor or not, and my imagination, my imagination is my tool. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for giving us that insight into your thought process. Let's go ahead and let's look at the uh, COVID piece um, as we've been discussing it. And give me just a second, I'll pull that up. Okay. Yes, she is. She's my baby. I call her my daughter because I have no children, but she's one of my children. So all my art is my children. Mm -hmm. So Covida, as, as everyone can see, uh, uh, the material, the black thing that you see there is plastic. Is um, the everyone's when they are working around construction, you can see a black fabric around, right? Protect, protecting the area. That is what it is. So this is a material who have already UV um, protection. So will be resistant for this, by the sun and the weather and the, the water and everything. And one of my background also is um, fashion. I grew up with my mother. She is a dressmaker. So I am the baby number six. And always I was <laughs> with her. And when she was making a dress or doing a dress, I was helping her. So I learned how to sew. So that is why also my subject matter, mostly on my subject matter are women. Because I am inspired for for the wo woman uh, figure and what I learned from my mother. Uh, women are my heroes. So my mother, my sisters, and all different women. So that is why I choose a woman for this project. Because this project was commissioned by the, the city of West Palm Beach under a COVID relief uh, fund. And they choose 15 artists. I am one of the 15 artists of the Commons project. That is the name of the project, 15 artists, 15 spaces. So, and they say, we need an art piece, public art, the, um, for COVID awareness. And I say, okay, COVID, and that is why she's wearing a mask. And that is why she's wearing a black dress because she's mourning. She is, she is featuring a woman who lost a relative, a son, a children. She can be a sister, she can be the neighbor, she can be the mother of someone who died by COVID. And right now you, we cannot see the details, but her skin, she's made by um, glass fiber, but I cover 
like a paper mache technique, that paper manipulation technique. And I also cover her with aluminum foil and poultry net, chicken wire. So in that way, she can become stronger. And the chicken wire around her allows me to attach to her the clothing, the dress. So the, the, the dress is made by different layer and pieces. And it's one, two, three, four, this bit is here. She is sitting in a platform and the platform is made by metal. But the chair that we use here in Florida to cover the window for hurricane protection. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the pedestal which she is sitting on. And I choose for her to show one leg because she's crossing the leg mm -hmm. and, and that a very sensual position that woman uh, uh, some, sometimes they portray themselves because she's very fashionable. The dress, I think, is beautiful. Many women say, Oh, I want to wear it. So, and she is mourning, she is um, having, a, they, she's living a very painful moment because of COVID, she lost relatives. However, she is an example of the resilience of the woman mostly. You, Leslie, as a woman, every woman, you are able to give birth. You are able to uh, support that big pain. And you always, as a woman, always are able to survive. So she's is a woman who survived hobby and she's wearing a mask because the less that we can do during this pandemic is try to protect ourselves and protect our community. And at the beginning of the pandemic, we don't know what to do. So at least the mask. Now we find many other things, but in that our piece was made in 2020 when we don't know nothing, any much or, 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 or no much about COVID. So she is wearing the black because the dark time of COVID for me, that is the color, black. And the different color from the mask, because she had a basket, and that basket is very colorful with a different mask, because mask is, for me, back in those days, was hope. And for me, hope is not just green. As many people say, oh, green is the color of hope. For me, hope is represented by life. And life is coming to us, or show to us, or present to us in different colors. So that is why that particular part of Covida is the only area where she has color plus the mask that she is wearing. Mm -hmm. It's such a beautiful piece and a beautiful message. And I love the great insight now that we have into um, you creating that piece and, and all the different aspects that go into it. Yeah, now COVIDA, um, I, I mentioned COVIDA was uh, made commissioned by the city of West Palm Beach, but that was uh, a project for the different 15 artists to create a provisional or temporary art. And some artists, they choose to create a um, performing art mm -hmm. or mural or any kind of art that will disappear. That was the project. After the project finished, the art will be no existing anymore. But because I create COVID using those weather material resistant, mm -hmm. so she is still alive. Mm -hmm. So the contract with the Zero West Palm Beach finished in 2021, and now COVID has, belongs to me entirely, because that, that was the part, part of the project, helping the artists during the pandemic to do something, and why not continue you know, the inspiration and working in the art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what a beautiful project to work on uh, for you and, and the other artists that also participated. Definitely. Yeah. Now, now that we've looked at the image of Covida with you um, creating it, we also have a video that opens up during the uh, opening of the Being Heard, Being Seen. And we also get to see you in the creation of also building the, um, the Covida piece. Um, what else is going on in the video that you'd like to set up for us, Emilio, before we take a look at it? 
Well, um, the, that video mentioned who I am, what I do, the, the different uh, uh, media I work with. And I just want people to, to see it, to see how I work and, and I made my, my myself. That is another example of my multidisciplinary uh, art skill because I, I just know or create visual art and sculpture. Also, uh, I act as an actor and all the, the video production. I am not an expert, but a little bit, I know, you know, so that part of that. And also I, uh, I am a uh, poet writer, so I write poems too. So I just want people to see the video, uh, a little sneak peek of what I can do visually. Yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and take a look and pull that up. Give me just a second. Hi, my name is Emilio Ponte Sierra Paretti and people call me a Ponte Sierra. I am from Colombia and I live in Palm Beach Garden. I met my mentor in paper manipulation art technique when I was studying in Magdalena University in Colombia. And my body of work is created using three different uh, medium. Photography, like uh, this one. Also ink on canvas, very colorful. colorful. And paper manipulation technique is three kinds of paper manipulation. is paper mache, origami, and paper sculpture. So I also add some um, um, fashion designs technique. I sew it, I make clothing. So instead to use fabrics, I use a uh, paper. I cut, I fold, I interweave, I twist, I roll, and I create this kind of art. <laughs> Emilio, I love that how we can see you in process actually <laughs> building Covida. Yeah, you saw the basket, the green, and that is made by three racks. The one we use to clean the, the, the backyard, three. I put it together. I, I use um, marine rope, and I love that rope because back in Colombia, when I was studying in Magdalena University, I became a fishing engineer. I learned how to tie all the different knots that they, uh, we do when we are out on the sea. So mm -hmm. I mix all my different background careers to make art. Mm -hmm. Right, and we can really fully see that, Emilio, um, in the video that we just watched, everything kind of coming together. And your creativity is just like off the charts, how you cut, you, <laughs> feed, you manipulate using the materials, you know, incorporating fashion, incorporating color. You know, of course, your, your love of, of texture, it just is, is really, amazing to experience that, that high, high energy and, and high creativity. 
Thank you. One thing in the video you notice is the, the guy in the bicycle with the old silver fabric. Looks like fabric, but it's not. That, that is my new um, sculpture. I made that just for this exhibition and, and Cultural Council Palm Beach, uh, for Palm Beach. And it's made with all different um, pipe, copper pipe. And the shiny material is aluminum foil. Aluminum foil that I, this is a, a fence, plastic frame. And I use wave it one by one piece of aluminum foil. And that is why I was able to create that uh, particular sculpture that I really am very proud of. The name is Transformation. It's, and when you see that in the front, it's a man driving a bicycle. But when you look by the back, it's a butterfly. I don't know if you notice, but you have to see it in the back and you're gonna see a beautiful butterfly. The face, uh, I, I, I use mirrors, little tiny mirrors to do the face, feathers, and tiny, uh, how you call, I don't drink, the, the little um, umbrellas that you use in the drink and the cocktails. Mm -hmm. So those tiny umbrellas, that is the one I use to put color because that's paper. Mm -hmm. Yes, I remember um, when I was there um, observing this a beautiful piece. I remember seeing um, the umbrellas and all the different detail. Um, it's really coming to life now as you're explaining it. We do have a um, photograph of that piece transformation. So let's go ahead and pull that up, Emilio, and let's take a look. Okay. It's my baby, yes. You can see the, 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 the stripe hanging from the body. Mm -hmm. So I leave that for people to see each one go into the uh, plastic fence and weave. And that is part of my paper manipulation technique. And the face, you can see also all the different color and the little uh, um, pixels that you, you see is basically the way I wave the paper. And the color that you see there, actually the color of the entire piece is not paint. That color comes with the material I selected. So that is also something that I always try to do in my art. When it's mixed media and sculpture, I don't, I don't like to add paint. All the color coming with the material I choose and I select for the piece. So when I am selecting, I like to go to different areas and uh, where I know I can find recyclable material. And also I go to those big hardware store and they become part of my inspiration also. <laughs> when I go to uh, those hardware store, uh, I am looking the, the different uh, items and material in a different way. Always I say, oh, look at this uh, little thing. Maybe it's a, uh, whatever. So those are also my uh, uh, places of inspiration. And you can see there the copper material uh, pipe that I used to build the bicycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just amazing. And so your antenna sounds like it's always up, Emilio, like you're out and about, like you're saying it's a hardware store or or wherever, and you're looking at the materials, you're seeing what's there, and then you're kind of like, hmm, okay, how could you incorporate this in, in a piece of your work? I'm also wondering, so the, the butterfly wings on the back of this piece symbolize transformation. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Usually, you know, when, when we uh, are talking about transformation, we think about the metamorphosis of a butterfly, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, I, I was thinking to name this metamorphosis, but I said, no, it's too complicated for me to pronounce. <laughs> so let's do another name. The real is it's a transformation. And the other two pieces in that exhibition, one is Covida, the other one is a black dress and I call Magno, honoring one of my best friends who passed by COVID. And he was a fashion designer and he loved uh, the Victorian dresses. 
So that is what I make that sculpture and it's black. Covida is black. So what I decide is transformation. We are getting out of COVID. So we need to move forward, but we need to look our back and our history. So that is why I decided to build a bicycle that helped us move forward. But this particular bicycle is an antique. So it's a bicycle moving forward, but it's an antique bicycle. So he, the, this particular bicycle has the history of Kobe. So, and I decided to use all aluminum foil because it's shiny. We need to find the light after COVID. The shiny from the uh, aluminum foil, for me, that is what it is, is light. Mm -hmm. We have to move forward through the light and try to deal with COVID as we move forward. Mm -hmm. That's uh, beautifully explained, Emilio. Um, because my next question, which you already answered, was the symbolism of the bike. So that's really about movement. And as you were saying, Emilio, it's antique because it's also um, writing the um, the memory or the, the history of, of COVID. But yet it feels like, you know, there's that transformation, that overcoming um, because it's riding it. So it kind of has that kind of like sense of control. And as you're saying with the shiny material, moving more into the light and into hope. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I am so glad you understood that because that is the main uh, uh, meaning of the piece. And I think it's, it's not so um, um, difficult to uh, um, translate. And thank you for, for also <clears throat> saying that here because uh, 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 I'm glad at least one person understood my, what I tried to say. <laughs> And also really when I was there looking at the three pieces, speaking of metamorphosis, not just in this piece, um, transformation, I really was you know, aiming to, to tap into seeing the evolution of the pieces in, in terms of time, you know, and, and what you were representing, you know, from 2020 and then, you know, uh, seeing the piece that was um, an honorary piece to your friend. And then, and now, um, you know, looking at this piece transformation, kind of like bringing everything full speed. So hearing you elaborate on the meaning, the message, and of course the materials and, and the construction of it is, is uh, really beautiful and, and very deep and very meaningful. Yeah, Kobe has been a time, you know, that um, um, very, very difficult for everyone. During Kobe at the beginning, uh, uh, people say, okay, now we are going to produce art and we are going to, you know, have time because we are um, in quarantine, we cannot go out. For me, it was different. I was not able to produce art until by the end of the 2020 when I started working with COVID because I was very depressed. So art as a guidance counselor and myself, I know art, you know, art therapy can help to overcome depression and those kind of things. But in my case, the inspiration was zero, but Covida was the, the one, um, was the art piece that helped me to uh, overcome that situation. That was very therapeutic. That is the word I was looking for, was a therapy for me to create Covid, uh, to create Covida. And Magno, the dress also was a, a catharsis for me because I lost my best friend because Covid. So um, that piece was made on the theater. Was, I was crying all the time. And, and I know, and he can see uh, what I did. I know he's very happy because he, Magno, he loved dresses. So Halloween was our favorite uh, a holiday for, for him and for me because it allowed us to work together and create things. Mm -hmm. So yes, COVID was 2020, Magno was 2021, and Transformation is the last one now, 2022. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate you sharing kind of like the emotions of what you went through, Emilio, like, you know, that we all can identify with um, because we've all, you know, gone through this together. And then also how art, Emilio, uh, for you personally has also been, you know, healing and, and therapeutic for you. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you. And one thing also that I, I, I am so uh, excited and proud to be in this exhibit for the Cultural Council for Bambit County, being here, being seen, 
is about LGBT and LGBTQ plus individual like myself. And it must, in this time where Florida is trying to uh, 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 silence us, we cannot say gay in the school, supposedly, and hopefully the, the Senate will say no, let's cross finger because it's, 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 it's not right. So this exhibit as um, in the Cultural Council is a space for us people who live and, and breathe and, and be part of the LGBT plus community. We can see, we can talk, we can express ourselves and people can find out who we are. And we are human beings. We are individual like anyone. So because we love people of our same gender, doesn't mean we are from another planet or we are no human. We are human. We love. Thank you, Emilio, for sharing that. We need to get, um, yes, uh, to wrap the show up. Um, oh my God. Yeah, the time really flies. Um, we like to have our guests um, provide closing comments. Um, if anything that we haven't touched upon, Emilio, in regard to your art or perhaps some um, other current things going on or anything you'd like to share. Um, and also let us know how we can stay connected with you, social media and whatnot. Definitely, thank you, Leslie. So one thing that maybe I just mentioned, but I want to mention is I work on commissions and I work also in collaboration with other artists. Mm -hmm. So there are other art pieces that you can find uh, uh, around, uh, made by me, but under a, a project. For example, we did the, uh, for the LGBT um, uh, month last year, I worked with Rolando Chan Barrero, and a big, big wall where he invite a hundred artists and everyone did a pajaro. And that is a, a, a project that I love that what I, I mentioned because uh, that is part of who I am. I like to collaborate with others. So if there is an artist doing a project and maybe we can work together, please contact me. And you can find me in internet and all social media E. Aponte Sierra in Instagram, e. Emilio Aponte Sierra Paretti in Facebook, Emilio Aponte in Twitter. Also, I am in TikTok, sometimes I dance too, you know, TikTok. And uh, my telephone number is open. You can find all in all my, my uh, website. It's Emil Art by Emilio Aponte Sierra. And the uh, phone number is 786-287-0052. I say here because it's there, so you can contact me through that and Emilio Aponte Sierra at gmail.com is my email. So I just want to uh, give a message to everyone. Um, this is an art talk. We're talking about art, but everyone do something regarding to art. So art is not just visual art, painting, and sculpture. If you are a, a wonderful chef, you are an artist. You are a wonderful dancer, you are an artist. So I like to invite everyone to use to art skill, whatever it is, to find yourself. Find yourself and help everyone or another to find themselves also. And please, please remember, people who are in the LGBT community, we are human too. So remember that. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yes, we're we're all human, LGBTQ plus, or you know, non. It's it's all a sense of unity and oneness. And I, I appreciate your your uh, reference to that. And um, I love how you like to collaborate. Um, and so, if anyone is watching who's an artist and wants to collaborate with Emilio, um, they're open to that. And um, much success with um, your your huge amount of creativity and sharing your spirit of creativity and your innovativeness with, um, you know, the, this paper technique and how it's evolved. And you think you're going to go and do any with your um, ink on canvas or the photo manipulation? I know you're focusing more on your mixed media these days. You think you'll kind of like tap back into that? Yes, I, I actually I had a project. I want to mix all the three, all the three medium I work on it. 
So I want, because I do paper manipulation, I am thinking to produce some photos and use those photos paper and manipulate using the paper manipulation technique and start incorporating paint because I do not in my sculpture do that. So, and that is my other medium, ink on canvas. So I am working in, in one big uh, piece incorporating those three mediums. And one thing that I forgot, I also want to say people is in March 26, I will be in the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County doing a lecture. They are uh, the path to being here, to being seen by Emilio Ponte Sierra. Oh, wonderful. So wonderful. March 26, Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to be on the lookout for that. And uh, I hope you receive a lot of commissions. Um, and much success, as I mentioned, with all your high, high octave creativity and, and love for art. And thank you also for sharing the, uh, the words to inspire people to explore an area of art, even as you were saying, if they're not an artist, to find themselves. So thank you so much for, for sharing that, sharing your art, and sharing your journey, Emilio. Thank you, Leslie, for inviting me in Art and Talk. And I am excited to see me later in the video. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Emilio. And again, uh, much success with all your art endeavors. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching Art and Talk today. Be on the lookout. In the next couple of weeks, we'll be bringing you some additional artists from the Being Heard, Being Seen exhibit. Again, at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. If you're local to the area or just uh, passing through until April 9th, please do check it out. It's absolutely amazing. And um, if you're not local to the area, you can jump on our Facebook Art and Talk page. There's a link to the Cultural Council website. You can check out some of the um, artists that are uh, in the exhibit currently. And also there's a link to a tour you can take where you can check out the exhibit as well. All right, so again, thank you for watching today and we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.